So I, I realize the last session ran over, um, but if we start late, we'll end late, and it'll only get worse. Um, OK, I'm, I'm Peter Miller. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I'm taking a, I don't know if people know about the history of OpenStreetMap, but um, this is quite an explosive subject, and I'm trying to bring some sort of discussion to it, but um, there are certain strong views around, um, hopefully where they will all neutralize into um, a lovely harmony. So um, bots, tools, and patrols, um, that was what I meant to put on my talk. It's slightly different in the printed material. A bot is an automated or semi-automated process that carries out trivial or, or mundane tasks. Um, a tool is something that a human uses to create a change, um, to perform some function. Um, and a patrol is a thing in Wikipedia where people are monitoring changes in something like real time. So this guy is using a tool. It's a, um, a um, heating um, tool. He's, he's brazing. Um, metal together. A tool is something that a human uses to achieve something that they can't do with their hands. Um, it's a creative thing. The tool does not define the outcome. The human def uses the tool to create what he wanted. This guy could do all sorts of things um, with that blowtorch. Um, and generally, to do something, um, you need a bunch of tools. Um, for my carpentry, I would use most of those tools. Um, some tools, I think this is a tool by that definition, some tools cause more change than other tools and give less finesse. And I think the people who don't like bots possibly are thinking of tools of this scale or possibly this. Okay. And there are people who have done dramatic things to the database which have caused a huge amount of work with things like that, um, which... Um, have been very hard to undo. Um, a machine is different from a tool because a machine, this machine can only do one thing, which is to fill bottles with milk, I think. Um, and the people mind it, but they can't make that tool do something different. They can't make that machine do something different in the way you can with a tool. Um, and of course, if you're going to make something big, you might want to organize people with their tools and their machines into a production line. I think this is a Model T Ford or um, one of the early car factories. And then, of course, the people turned into robots. And it's interesting when I was preparing this, thinking that actually a robot is a thing that uses a tool. Because whereas a machine will only produce one outcome, it will only fill bottles, these robots, you might be able to program these robots to do something else with the tools that they're using. I guess you probably could. Um, so the robots is, is, a, is an automated tool. So my, my talk is to compare, I was meant to turn this on and find out what the time was, so let me just turn that on. Um, so when you started with Wikipedia, this was the tool. There were a few other things that you could use. You could look at the history of changes for an article. You could have a watch list. You could look at the edits made by a contributor. And pretty much those four tools um, were what Wikipedia was. But by the time there were sort of millions of articles, that was found not to be um, good enough. So they also published, and it's not worth, don't, don't try and read these, but these were the sort of the principles of what Wikipedia was trying to be. And anything you tried to do with Wikipedia, you needed to check whether it fitted with these pillars. And if it didn't, you shouldn't do it. And if it did, you probably could. Um, the, worst, the bottom one says there are no firm rules. Um, so they, there are policies and guidance, and there, and there are the five pillars. And this, I think, is an important one because I've heard the contrary in OpenStreetMap. Um, ownership of articles. When you contribute an article, when you add to an article, when you create an article, if an article is about you or your organization, you don't own it. You can't say what happens. You have no extra right um, as to what goes into that article. You may have information which would be helpful to create a balanced and accurate article, but you can't say this is my article. There are people who do, and there are certain articles I don't touch for that reason. Um, 
But they created another tool, and this is the Auto Wiki Browser. It basically is a fast, automated process of doing things which are tedious and repetitive within Wikipedia, um, which you could do by hand, but you can do them five or six times faster. A tool is used by a person, and the, this, this, in normal environment, the Auto Wiki Browser, will, the edits will be done in my name, it, the edit comment will say that it used this tool, but if it's wrong, it's my problem, it's not the tool's problem. I take responsibility for the edits. However, Auto Wiki, Auto -Wiki Browser can be set up in a, um, in a bot formation. You'll notice that banner at the top, you are resp totally responsible for what the bot does. So th this is uh, going down the page. You're responsible for the edits. Abide by the uh, guidelines. Very importantly, do not make controversial edits. In normally, when editing Wikipedia, you're told to be bold. In this case, you're told to be careful because you could change thousands of articles. And very importantly, don't make insignificant or inconsequential edits because every edit someone has to check, might people get want to check and see whether it's good. So don't just do things which are in, in, insignificant, but if you're making other changes, you might want to do some tidy up at the same time. And you know, repeated abuse of these rules may result in you disappearing. Um, Battybot. Battybot, now, now we're talking about a bot. Now we're talking about a robot that does, but this robot uses Auto Wiki Browser. So this is, um, and so this is acting autonomously. Um, although it has an owner, a controller, um, there's also an emergency stop button. I could press that right now and that, that thing would stop. And if I didn't give a good reason, the person who owns it would scowl at me and ask why. Um, you'll notice these tasks that this, this bot does using AutoWiki Browser. Um, and those tasks have all been approved and they've, got, and they've got the last date and they've got a description. Every time you change a bot to do a new task, you need to get approval for that new task. You can't just get approval and then um, make it better. Um, there are 1,800 bots, of which about 140 are running at the moment. These are the approved ones. You'll notice that list only gets down to the A's. Um, side bot has done 4.5 4 million edits. Another one's done 4 million edits. Now looking at this graph, the top graph there are all the edits. Um, the, the light blue one are the edits done by bots. So about 20% of the edits to Wikipedia are being done by bots. Um, of the ed and most of the edits are being done by people who don't edit. Very, don't edit. Um, they are not in the top 5,000 editors. Um, Patrols um, is the sorry. What the clock? Is a, sorry, I should have seen where there's a clock. Good, good. I'm doing all right. So patrols are different. Patrols are people looking for things to catch things early. So um, if someone mark, any, and anyone can mark any article for for, for deletion, um, that will then get looked at by someone. Um, there's an article rescue squad, which is someone saying, yeah, this article is not referenced, and it's been marked for deletion, but actually it's valuable, so please could someone rescue it? Please could someone put some references in and get it, because we don't want to lose it, but we don't want to leave it as it is. Um, and then, you know, new pages for patrol. If someone creates an article, it will be looked at within a few minutes, and someone will press a button, that's all right. Or, no, it's not, out it goes. Or put some tags on it to say, please, can you sort it? Um, this is the new page, Patrols. I took this page, this screen grab, this morning. Um, there are Q, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't use this stuff, but basically here is a list of you know, how many articles there are needing um, attention, um, new pages needing attention. So let's now look at OpenStreetMap. Um, so OpenStreetMap has one main tool, which is, well, it has three main tools, which are all manual editors, um, JOSM, ID, and Potlatch. They all do most of, the, most of the work. They're three different versions of the same thing, but fundamentally all changes are done by hand. Um, and I think probably the vast majority of edits are done using those tools. They're certainly the only ones I use. 
Um, now, I, I have an interest in transport and um, road safety and speed. This is looking at um, tag info, and this is the max speed column. And this is page 22 of 55 of the tags. We're now down to tags of which there are only about five. In this case, there are five of each of these. And all of these are really pretty odd. You know, 50 to 90 might be the value. Um, um, 31 miles an hour, 50 colon 80. That's a, and 55 mph slash 65 mph. That's a very common one. Two pe someone has joined two, sec two roads that are next to each other, and the editor's gone, all right. But they've got different values on max speed. Now, the real answer would be for say, are you, do you really want to do this? You really shouldn't do this. But if it does do it, it's really tedious to find out where that was and recover it. You have to go into the history and find I, I didn't even know how to do it. Um, and you've lost information there. You've lost where that join was, which might have been there. So these are the sorts of things which either a tool or a bot could sort out. Um, if you're totally confident, for example, the bot might say, if I see two ways which have been joined with a little semicolon in max speed, I will revert, I will delete that, I, I will revert back to the two ways, um, and I might leave a message, send a message to the person who did it to say, by the way, I've done it, if, if that's what you really wanted. Um, in other cases, it might um, pick things up. Now, let me just move on. Yeah, there are other tools. Um, this is the battle grid, which shows you things. But basically, all you can do is to go in one of those editors. And in this case, it's probably the right thing to do. Because when you're playing with geometry and uh, adjusting geometry, you do really need a an editor that can deal with geometry and see the context. There are a bunch of other quality tools. And there's Matt Roulette. Now, all of these are really good at identifying issues, but quite frankly, I lose the will to go into an editor every single time to do that. This one here is saying this section here has got a different sort of cycle track than the one that's in the database. Why do I have to go into an editor to do that? Why can't we have a faster editor that allows me to just make that change from here in my name using a tool um, which I could probably do four or five times faster than going into editor, making the change, saving, putting a, putting a comment field, and getting out and doing the next one. Um, so I'm just going to sort of wrap up, and I wanted to leave a really good amount of time for discussion. Um, I've done a lot of work on the wiki, on the OSM wiki, in the past um, four months over a period of time. It's always good to work slowly on a wiki, on Wikipedia, to give people time to come in and say that you've got it all wrong, or to support you, or just to leave you alone. If you make an edit and nothing happens for a week, it's a very good sign. Um, so there's the automated edits page. There used to be automated edits and mechanical edits, and some people for about 10 times tried to explain me to the difference, but they were so similar that I, we agreed that we would merge them. So automatic edit, mechanical edit. Um, Yes, there is a there is a difference, but it, it felt like it was more helpful to 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 not try and pull those apart. There's the automated edits code of conduct, which is basically the guidelines of how you should do things. Um, I haven't changed any of the meaning, and some of the meaning, for example, down here it says you shouldn't change a way. You should, if someone says that you shouldn't change a tag that they put on, then you should respect that. Well, I think I should respect it if it's correct, but otherwise we get back to the ownership issue. But I've left that wording in because I wasn't trying to change the wording. I was just trying to make the wiki read better. Now, these are the bots in OpenStreetMap. There's XY bot, which was mentioned this morning. But the interesting thing is that hasn't run since September 2012. In fact, if you look at the last use dates, there are only two which are active. There's Wall-E, which works in, the, in um, Germany and Austria. And there is, um, um, there is a one, with Czech Reg, which runs in the Czech Republic. Um, XYBot doesn't work. Um, General Dreidel isn't doing anything. Um, and I actually I wanted to go and have a look and s ask people why these weren't working. So I think that's, that's the last of my slides. Um, Let's have a great big discussion in a great big room. Anyone got any comments, observations? 
Yes. So there was an issue that I brought up earlier of, me of mechanical edits to tags that are deprecated. Uh, for example, one came up on the list recently, which was substation versus sub underscore station, power colon, something along those lines. I didn't pay much attention to it. But one thing that a bot could do is say, oh, you made an edit of this form, but that's a deprecated tag. You can keep it if you want, or I'll change it for you. And if we did this, the lists would blaze. They would blaze, and I think they possibly should. Um, I don't know if one of my heroes is my grandfather, who is um, Jeffrey Vickers. He was a system scientist, and he wrote a book called Freedom in a Rocking Boat. Um, and the title meant, if you are in a small, a, a small rowing boat, you have the freedom to stand up. But if you all stand up, the boat will sink. <laughs> Now, we are trying to create a useful database. If we are all anarchists, and I fear OpenStreetMap was started by anarchists and cyclists, which isn't very much different, uh, um, we could end up with anarchy. But anarchy is no use to someone who's trying to use things. People can accommodate in a couple of, you know, if the Americans said that they wanted to, you guys, sorry, uh, well, I don't know, you're all, all over the place. We're not, I mean, we're not even in America, we're in the United Nations. Um, we're not even in the United, you know we're not in the United States at the moment. The UN is not the United States. Um, um, hopefully that's in the boundary of um, correctly an open street map. Um, sorry, I lost my thread. Anarchy. Anarchy, yeah. So if we don't have rules, if in North America you said interstate, and if they said autobahn, and you know uh, all the different names, it would be useless. Why can't we have one name for one thing? for a substation. Um, but I think this is a conversation to have, but we shouldn't expect that there won't be a pushback. Hello. Hello, Richard. If it is Richard. Hello. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm both an anarchist and a cyclist, so I guess that counts. Um, I think it's interesting that the title of your talk was What to Learn from Wikipedia, or the subtitle. Because um, what to learn from Wikipedia is as much what not to do as what to do. And there's a really interesting article on the MIT Technology Review, which is called The Decline of Wikipedia. Uh, and I won't, well, uh, I won't read out the whole thing because it's about 5,000 words long. But a couple of um, key phrases from it. It says that in 2007, uh, Wikipedia admins set loose automated bots that could reverse any incorrectly formatted changes. Um, it then goes on to say, being steamrolled by the newly efficient impersonal editing machine was no fun, uh, and since then the likelihood of a new participant's edit being immediately deleted has steadily climbed. Because Wikipedia has failed to replenish its supply of editors, its skew towards technical, Western, and male-dominated subject matter has persisted. Now, I think that is the danger that bringing more bots into OpenStreetMap gives us, that, yeah, we get a tidy database, but we have to be really careful that we don't do that at the cost of the community, which is what builds the database in the first place. Yes, I, I agree. And um, the sort of welcoming new users, um, I almost gave up on Wikipedia when I started because horrible things happened. All sorts of rocks came at me. For some reasons, I couldn't find justifiable later and understood, but at the time, it was incredibly... Um, off-putting. Um, I'm not saying this is a panacea, but I'm saying the database is too big to make all the changes using a single tool. It's like we've got one tool that's called an editor and it's a hammer and we just keep hitting, hitting it. Let me... We wait for this red now, yeah? Go, go, go. Just an objection to that MIT article. Oh. Basically, these bots revert only stuff that's detected as an obvious vandalism. Incorrect formatting is never reverted by a bot. Well, there are lots of humans who sometimes patrol recent changes for hours, and uh, eventually they became bot-like, but <laughs> that's a different problem. Yeah. If you turn, turn, turn your microphone off. Yes, I, I'm 
the impact I had when an early Wikipedia editor wasn't bots, it was um, human beings um, coming in quite, quite hard. Sorry, I, I, there's another Wiki Wikipedia. Go, 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 go. And then. There we go. Uh, another comment. Um, there are some Wikipedias, I believe Swedish, but I might be mistaken, so don't quote me on this one, um, that are almost as big as English. And they're called Botopedias. They do exist. They're not in English. They're, they're only, like, it's basically the community, a local community allows that to happen and is okay with that. And then it becomes like a competition of numbers, like whose Wikipedia is bigger. Um, and that's what happens. But uh, the more prolific, the more active wiki, uh, wiki communities usually prohibit uh, massive imports by bot. So it's like a matter of editing of small stuff versus ma massive imports. Imports are usually bad, whereas small corrections are usually helpful. I think there was an example of importing um, stars um, where there were all these articles, and all they were were copies of a version of a database at a time the import was happening. There wasn't anyone interested if no one could bothered to create the article, no one edited the article, they got stale, the information was available elsewhere. So it's interesting that there are parallels. Andy. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, extremely involved with Wikipedia. I've got nearly 200,000 edits across Wikipedia and its sister projects <coughs> and risks that glow in the dark um, from all the typing. Uh, the problem, I also spend a lot of time training new editors and mentoring new editors, and the problems that put them off editing Wikipedia are humans, not bots, so, so I'd like to put that to rest straight away. But coming back to the point of OSM, what is it that is actually stopping us running bots? Um, I know that not so much the sort of bots that you've outlined, which, and you've made some extremely good use cases for dealing with routine problems like the splitting of ways and speed limits and so on. <coughs> I've proposed a few automated edits in the past which would have been run by a script that would have added certain tags. My talk yesterday was about Wikidata, for instance, and it seems to me that a few vocal editors on a mailing list can stop something that, that from the conversations I've had here, seems to have consensus within the community at large. And I think we need to look at whether the decision-making processes are skewed rather than whether there's actually opposition to running bots. Yeah, I think there is the, 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 the tyranny of the veto. Um, I think there are... Um, I put this, the slide about the pillars of Wikipedia up because I think what we should do is have pillars of OpenStreetMap, and I'm not sure if they exist, you know, an accurate map of the world. Edits, you should have great confidence that an edit is making the map more complete, more accurate, more consistent. And there, when someone says you shouldn't do that, the answer is, well, if it meets those criteria, then possibly you should, yeah? If it doesn't, then you shouldn't, because otherwise we get these, we think, you know, the policies say, but they don't trawl back to five principles which allow you to test the validity of that. There was a, sorry, there was, yes. There are two discussions to be had here, I think. One is what can be done, and the other is what should be done. Um, what? <laughs> what can we do, and what should we do? The pillars will, will talk about what should we do. Yes. OK. Because you know, I, when I was in Japan for this map there, I started trying to sort out some issues between forests and the coastline. It was very clear from aerial imagery the forest went up to the coastline. It was hell in Potlatch making that work. I had this idea that you could render the forest, you could render the coastline, you could then re-vector it, and you could put it back. Now, I, would, I think that might save tens of thousands of hours. It could create a disaster in the database if it was done wrongly. But I think there are some really interesting, really powerful things we can do. Um, but we need to start by taking small steps. The first thing I do was to try and get some sense into the wiki, see if there was some discussion that was supportive, and then start doing some stuff and start discussing with people 
who feel that it's wrong, that, you know, well, yeah, let's, let's have another look at it. Anyone else? Sorry. I just... Okay, um, just to get into the discussion, we had, the hist we had an history of um, ill-running bots in OpenStreetMap from earlier times. I think this is the reason why there is a profound opposition. I remember not on the details, but I think XYBot has been stopped because it has been con done controversial edits. So I think uh, there is a not so small and just vocal opposition. I think there's just in the history of OpenStreetMap there are there are um, cases where this has gone wrong. And the reason for this is um, there is a couple of um, subtleties. For example, it's for me, it's the first time I get in the United States. And as a German, when I would like to get a Coke at 3 in the morning, I would go to the next gas station because that's a place where usually things are, um, are sold 24 hours and seven days. And when I get to New York, I see it's not, the, not so much the gas station, but I would rather get, go to, to a grocery or something which um, is uh, which is selling 24 hours a day. And so there are subtleties, and often if you don't have the social skills to figure out what's specific yeah. to a social com to a special community, you could easily have a, a writer bot that would uh, steamroll just the uh, standards of other communities you are not, uh, you don't know. I think one thing we should make for sure is that the bot is not running outside the community that the author of the bot understands. Okay. I, look, there is a lot of history and there are mistakes have been made. The checking of bots before you run them, making sure they don't do things in areas you didn't expect, on tags that you didn't expect because you didn't think it through, testing things in very small numbers, being very cautious, having very very careful controls before you ever let the thing loose on the real database and then you do it in, on a leash um, is really important. So one last question. Question and, and remarks at the, at the main, same time. Uh, a, a lot of um, our uh, the tags are supposed to be the same worldwide, but yes. uh, in, in fact we know that it's not really uh, exactly the case. So uh, running about in a, uh, on some area on a country, for example, in a, on a region or something like that, uh, to first exactly like. Um, Look at Osmos, for example. It's detecting uh, uh, possible errors, possible mistakes. But the, the, the rules, some rules can, can be applied worldwide, but some rules uh, need to, to be run on, the, on specific countries or specific language or things like that. And a bot is, uh, uh, can, can run on top of, of um, uh, errors and mistakes detected by uh, quality assurance tools, for example, and, and uh, uh, with the same logic, you cannot apply, uh, you cannot run a bot. Some bots can be run worldwide. Yeah, I, I agree. I and, totally agree. And some bots need to be more local because they, they try to solve more local problems. Correct. And, and Correct. They, I, I, they, they really need to not to go uh, outside of an area, otherwise they will I, create I, problems. I, I totally agree. And I, and I think that's, um, but I'm just going to leave you with a conversation I had last week on driverless cars um, with, with a guy at another conference, which was to point out the driverless cars are going to need to learn how to drive in different countries and have different driving styles in the, U in, in the US, France, Tehran, um, you know, and, and Tur Turkey and things. Um, they're going to have to have different driving, and that was quite shocking. And um, in places where they don't obey the law, then possibly they don't obey the law. I don't know if that's—I don't think that's relevant at all to this conversation. But it was just a bit freaky for me. Thank you very much.